Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Morning Gardener. You recognize me? Recognize me? It's been a while since you've seen me. I am doing good. Everything is good. I am now involving myself in a couple practices uh, here at the, at the uh, gardening center here at my own uh, garden center here. Uh, let me tell you something, folks. Uh, went, out, went outside today uh, and actually got um, some of my trees cut back. Uh, these, trees, these trees were 22, 23 feet tall. And these are dwarfs. These are dwarf trees, and they, they were 22 feet tall. I went out there with my, uh, 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 you know, tools, and I cut that crap back because I said I don't play that. Let my trees get all the way where, where if they were to produce fruit up that high, I can't reach it. Uh, I don't do that. Now I got a couple more trees to do, um, and get those um, trees under control as far as height and size are concerned. And some of them was actually wider than, than I remember. I mean, I went and, listen, folks, I went and looked at my trees and saw that they were big, not only just tall, but my trees were wide across. You understand what I'm saying? They were wide. My trees were wide as could be. I've never seen them that wide before. So what happened was when I looked at my trees, I said, are these the same trees? And I'm feeding them their own branches when I cut my, my when I do my trimming. I leave them at the base. Um, I use grass clippings. I use uh, leaves, uh, and my trees are growing like crazy. My trees are acting like they're crazy, and you know, like I don't recognize them no more. Now, here's another good thing going on. I'm gonna throw it out there because I know when I go online, you know, I'm used to now I have a couple people come in the room. Uh, it's like a large percentage of them don't really say anything. They just kind of sit out there and, and kind of uh, be part of it. What's up, brother? Morning, God. Hello, how you doing? Hello, how's everyone? I don't do uh, I don't do that. I don't do that. Oh, okay, you don't do that. Uh, I think you're talking about uh, you don't leave the branches down around your your uh, your base of your tree. I've been doing that for years, and Hell, it worked. Uh, preach, brother. Preach, brother. So much. <laughs> Let's say this. I think I'm gonna keep that saying right there. If you don't mind, if I borrow that. But, but what happens is, I cut down the branches and leave them there, and they do great. They do absolutely great. The trees. I, I'm not buy. Look, I don't buy fertilizer for these trees, and and they're big and burly, and these supposed to be young trees, but they're pretending like they're adults because they're just getting just a stick around the trunk. Um, the branches are thick. Um, uh, and I got to tell you, I brought them down. I brought them down. The, now my trees now, for the most part, but between, depending on which trees you look at and what mood I was in when I cut them down, uh, some of them are six and a half feet, some of them are seven feet, but around in that range because my, my reach is actually about nine feet. So I cut, I cut them. I cut the heck out of those trees. So when I cut them off, I know I'm going to get a few things going to go on. One, it's going to stimulate the tree into producing um, a spurs, uh, more spurs, because the tree thinks it's in trouble. It thinks it's being attacked and cut up and, and, and devoured. So the tree starts preparing itself to produce more fruit so that it has more seeds, so that it can carry out the duties of of being born again. That's what trees do. They create other trees so that they can keep their species alive. Now, so so I'm looking at this and I cut, and, and I used to be one of those people when I first started growing uh, fruit trees, I would cut them down and I would keep all of that debris and cut it up and I'd go put it in a compost pile. No more. I don't do that. If you want to be neat about it, you can cut them up into smaller pieces and leave them down around the base of your tree. But when you leave them around the base of your tree and the grass clippings and the, and the, the leaves, you got to remember, these are wild living things. They don't need uh, 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 it doesn't my point is, is that they eat. 
they, their their job is to keep living. That's a tree's job. Not necessarily give you fruit because the tree could get care less if you got fruit or not. But it, it uh, does want to produce fruit, which is a sack that has the genetics for the next generation of trees. That's all a tree do is produce itself. But but I love it because um, if you feed the tree right, it will produce uh, award winning award winning uh, fruit that. I bit into an apple last year that was so good, I knew now what apples are supposed to taste like, what they're supposed to actually taste like. And I saw that for myself. And, and I, when I was a kid, I've eaten, you know, growing up, I've eaten many apples and and and, and it was okay. They were grow, really bought from the grocery store or, uh, you know, and, and it was okay. But, but these, when you grow them yourself, Oh my God, the sweetness. Oh my goodness. Oh, let me just think for a second, folks. Let me just think for a second. I'm just trying to go back to when I bit that apple and it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. It was sweet. It was juicy. It cracked when you bit into it. And it was so good. Ah, oh, I remember that. And now, my first peach that I absolutely fell in love with, what came from my peach tree called a, a Hell Haven. And it was absolutely incredible, folks. Absolutely incredible. I could not believe that that's how a peach is supposed to taste. Um, my first tomato, my very first tomato got me hooked on gardening because I thought that the, 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 the grossest, uh, the store uh, bought uh, tomatoes was what the tomatoes were supposed to taste like. And I remember I didn't really ever really like tomatoes. Um, but back in the old days, let's go back in the old days, let's go back some. Uh, I used to eat a lot of tomatoes because they were, they were from a farm. And I ate them to the point where I got sick one time. Uh, I just kept eating them. My father bought like, I don't know, some four or five pounds of them. He put them in the refrigerator before a dinner we were having. And I went in there and I remember biting and salting and biting and salting and biting. I kept doing it and I kept eating all these tomatoes. And what happened to me, and I want to warn any of you, if you ever eat a lot of tomatoes with some people, it'll make you break out. It'll make you break out on your back all up and down your back because of the acidity of the of the uh, the uh, fruit and it will mess you up you will never forget it and you have to have somebody to rub some uh, something on your back to help those those areas heal because they will be inflamed and it will be it's, it's horrible I had a good doctor too he found out what it was he said what have you been eating lately and he said that when he said that I said uh, tomatoes. I'm a kid. I'm about eight, nine years old. And he says, uh, tomatoes. How many tomatoes did you have? I said, I don't know, about 10, 10 tomatoes and 12 tomatoes. <laughs> you know how kids are. And, and, um, and it was just crazy. So I learned that you eat them in moderation. But when I fell in love with them was when I grew my first tomatoes. I don't remember what variety it was. But it was a tomato because back when you start gardening out, a lot of us don't keep in mind what, what type of tomato we're growing. We just grow a tomato. This feels good. There's no way to cry. You're wasting your life on a boat going nowhere. I love that song. So uh, that being said, um, I did a lot of things that got done today. I actually repaired my, um, I repaired my pellet stove. Oh, I want to, I want to just, you know, thank God above for giving me the, the talent 
that I had to repair things because it was just incredible. I, 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 I kept messing with the stove, messing with the stove, and it was just hard to figure out what's wrong. And I grabbed a couple of videos and, 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 it, and it, um, the drawer that was on the bottom, which is called the ash drawer, uh, had two levers on the side. Um, Okay, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking out loud, folks. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm call it on this one because I got, I got. Some, no, I'm not gonna call it on this one. Let me. I gotta go take care of something. I'll be back. Got this really, really, really soft metal that um, that they made of. I mean, if you 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 so I'm not wearing a pretty decent stove. Oh, hello. How you doing? Uh, good. Uh, greetings. Greetings to you as well. I'll be, I'll be checking out your videos. Um, and I, I just, I know that you, you don't, you make it do what it do. Uh, I'm just looking at it. Oh, wait a minute. The bull is there. I didn't see him there. God darn it. Chop and chop is great. That's what he put there. time I've left a message. No, I didn't leave a message. I called before. Um, but uh, you, 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 I bought a stove from you, and right where the ash drawer is, those two little uh, metal latches on each side, um, one of them failed. Uh, just trying to get uh, a part, and the owner and I are very good uh, friends, so I just wonder if I could uh, maybe have him come in and call, and we could talk about well, you know, the way I could repair the latches. I have or get a get a, so a new one and something to that effect. But uh, give me a call back and you can get in touch with me. You have my number on file. Thank you. Bye bye. I think that the coronavirus got that store closed down because this is the second time I've called that store. I bought a pellet stove from them. I love my pellet stove. And I see. I tried. I think. Uh, your outstanding result. Absolutely. I'm glad somebody tried it. Thank God somebody had the gut to say, I don't care what other people think. I'm going to try this and see what happens with my vegetables or my flowers or my fruits. And I'm going to tell you something. It, it, um, what I like about using human urine as a fertilizer is that the results are immediate. Um, if you if you do it in the morning and you give a plant some urine, uh, like I said, mix it one part uh, to... Well, uh, how, how did you mix yours? Did you dilute yours? Okay, I tried the diluted urine outstanding results. So he did dilute it. 
you know, but I'm just trying to say, uh, I, I, I do a one part to 10 parts water, 10 parts water. And, uh, and, and, and the stuff works incredible. I mean, it's just got to, it's, so when spring comes here, if the Lord willing and everything, you know, uh, with the way this world is working, the, the, I am not uh, the person that's going to be going up to the big box stores, grand and all this um, stuff that they call um, um, fertilizers. Now, I just did a video and put it up, and it's about how you're getting ripped off when you, uh, when you try to go out and buy things for your garden. You are getting ripped off. You are getting ripped off. Get that in your mind. You're getting ripped off. It's happening when you buy stuff. They got it overpriced. And again, they're selling you this pipe dream. Oh, look at these great triple tomatoes and, and peas and, and, and watermelons. And this is what, it's, you know, um, uh, they are standing up strong. That's what they do. That's the first result you get is they'll stand up strong. And you did a one part to 10 part um, uh, 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 water. And, and I got to tell you, it's incredible stuff. Urine is so, if, if it wasn't for the fact that, that, uh, people are kind of grossed out by it. it would be the number one fertilizer out there on the market because I've done it. it, it it'll outperform miracle Grow. It'll outperform it because I had plants that I was giving miracle Grow and plants I was giving urine and the urine uh, plants did way better, way better, folks. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up. Somebody gave me a thumbs up there. And, uh, and let's see now. What did the, let's see, Chopper Chopper's Gray. What's up, brother? Morning, Gardner. And that is coming from uh, the bull. The bull is, is a, I see him out there working his garden. The man is a hardworking man in that garden. He be deep, he putting it in. Uh, I want to see uh, all of the people that are here get more and more better results when, they, when they're gardening. Because um, the, the, when, you, when you keep gardening in one spot, you keep staying there. And you just keep plowing away and, and trying to make food grow. And you used to say, why am I growing less? And why is it more difficult? Well, it's because sometimes your soul gets tired because um, you have to grow in such a way that, that it allows for the soil to uh, rejuvenate itself. The soil does rejuvenate itself. Because you look at the soil in the, uh, in the forest and you look at how many uh, hundreds of different plants, different types of plants, uh, weeds, vines, bushes, trees, all these uh, plants grow together. Only the weak ones die and the strong ones survive. They all grow together. They're not putting a straight line and or, or, or carrots over here and tomatoes over there and peppers in here. They don't function that way because that robs the soil when you do it in that fashion. But if you do, uh, if if you grow everything together, each one of these plants will give the other plant some nourishment. Each one of these plants will give the other plant some nourishment, or they will completely wipe the other plant out. But you'll learn from it. You'll say, okay, I put the bell peppers here. Next to it, I put the tomatoes. Next to it, I put the tomatoes. I put the eggplant. Next to it, I put next to it, I put there. I put the uh, the uh, the squash, and then I put over here. I put the corn with that. And guess what will happen? They're going to survive because they're all going to uh, 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 assist each other. Uh, I never knew. Thank you for the valuable information. Anytime, anytime, anytime. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think you mentioned me one time on your channel as well. You mentioned me um, on your channel. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, this, it was a, as out of nowhere. And you said, morning garden show. Uh, he's pretty crazy. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> no, but you said you, you mentioned me, and I do appreciate that. Um, it was it was out of left field. I didn't I didn't expect I didn't expect anyone to mention uh, because I have this problem where I I am on this gardening thing all the time. I, I sit at work and I'm like this, and I'll be thinking about gardening. People say, you know, they call me. I say, oh yeah yeah yes yes go ahead, you know, and I'm like this because. I'm thinking, what if I did it this way? Or, or wait a minute, if I, if I tried growing those in containers, that would work. But what if, I, what if I put my drain hole in a bucket on the side an inch from the 
top from the bottom, uh, I can create a reservoir there so that when you get them hot days, I don't have to worry about my plants necessarily running out of water. Hmm. How much space do I need in a container to grow a watermelon plant? I've been thinking about all kinds of things. I've been thinking about, uh, okay, okay, I'm gonna make some, I'll make some more fertilizer. Huh. Now let's see. What will I do? I think I'm going to, and I go through this in my head uh, because I don't believe what uh, uh, you know. People, see, anybody can grow a garden, but you have some people that are extremely successful at growing gardens, and some are not. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. I see you wrote there. You learned a lot from me. I, I appreciate that. I hope that we're all, you know, learning uh, from each other and, and you know, and really, um, uh, you know, becoming better, better at what we're doing because uh, I love it when I see people holding up tomatoes and they're proud of them because they're, they're sweet. Oh, let's see what we got in. Who is this? Hello? This is amazing. These scammers will call your phone and they say, your social security number has been suspended. If you are considering looking into the matter, push one. Like I'm going to push one. Like I think that the social security administration is going to actually contact you by phone. No, they're not going to do that. They're not going to contact you by phone. It will be in a letter. It will be in a letter. It will not be over the phone. Scammers, I mean, y'all can't be that bright and try to call people like that. Come on. Hopefully, some people are smart enough to go, oh, let me push one. And when you push one, it do something where they get into your phone or your account or, or they get you on the line and they want you to answer certain questions. Then when you say certain words, they save the word and then they move them over and they use them and, and they'll, they'll say, would you like to open this account? And they use your voice and say that word, you know. A Y E S word, and and then next thing you know, people are buying boats and cars under your dime, or your name, or your social security number, or whatever. But you know, come on now, come on. I'm in the middle of trying to help people, and I got scammers calling me up. I, I believe the government cannot get rid of those scammers because I've signed up for sign up for a scam away, and and don't call me no more scammers, and and they still can get through. I digress. Let's get back to where we were. It is important to pay attention to your plants. You'll learn from them. Look at those leaves, folks. Look at those leaves. Those leaves will tell you every time. Just look at the leaves. If it's light green, man, it's missing something. When you give a plant human urine, those leaves are darkening up green. They'll get, they'll get real glossy looking. Just keep feeding them once a week. Um, uh, don't try to do more than once a week. Don't get greedy and do more than once a week. Actually, only do once a week or every two weeks. But don't do uh, more than that because you, you'll you'll burn the roots up. You'll you'll, you'll cause a problem. Uh, and and so uh, you can do a foliar spray with the uh, with the urine. Um, and before you. Pick your plants. This is what I do. If I got peppers all over my uh, plant and I'm feeding, 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 feeding urine to a plant, I may wait a week and a half or two weeks before I go to pick my peppers. Because I just, you know, that's something I do. Um, and urine comes to the body is sterile. It is from your body. And uh, uh, I, I like using it because one is absolutely free. Two is balanced beautifully. If you go look up what's in urine, what's in human urine, excuse me, let me reiterate that. What's in human urine, you will see that human urine is perfect balance for a lot of different plants. And you'll be like, hey, he's right. And so that being said, 
you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. And you'll say, I don't know why I wasn't doing this years ago when I started gardening. Uh, I've heard about it, but it, it sounded disgusting, so I didn't do it or whatever. But I love, I love it. I love it. it, it you, you, you can produce your own fertilizer, it, uh, you know, in and, and a gallon. And then you go one part and then fill the rest of it up with water. And then take that water, put it in a, a watering can or a spray uh, device and, and really have fun with it and go around and just tighten your plants up. Um, now, if you, if you have access to a fireplace or a color stove, you sprinkle a little bit of that uh, 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 ashes, if you will, into the... Uh, uh, the urine that you mix down, say like if you got a gallon, you put like a teaspoon of uh, uh, God, what's it called? Like you said, uh, ashes in there. And, Cause don't get over crazy with the ashes. Ashes can cause more problems than, than you would be amazed. But if you put a teaspoon in a gallon of water, it's not gonna hurt anything. And you pour that around your plant. Now these are plants that are that are flowering plants. Like if you have uh, peppers that produce blossoms, and you have uh, rose bushes that that you want to, to really start, get them to stop pumping out some roses. Uh, you put that, that those two together, uh, and you got you're gonna have some fun because you're gonna first see your roses blossom like you never had before. I used to have my neighbors drive by and they would they would they would get on the cell phone and call me and say, "I just want to know what are you doing with your roses? How are you growing them like that?" And I said, "Don't you worry about that." I said, I'll tell you, you know, just don't be driving by you uh, on the phone. I said, just we'll get together and I'll tell you what I'm doing. And I'll give the information to them. Uh, I have learned a lot from you. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got the, we got, we got a lot of good uh, topics going today, but I'm going to cut it short uh, because it's almost going on 30 minutes. See, here's another, another call. I hate these calls. another telemarketer and you thought I was just joking about that they are hitting me left and right so you know but but just keep in mind that uh, this year just do what you do and do it better uh, and and avoid if you can digging in your soil a lot don't keep digging in your soil a lot tearing up the homes and uh, the, the structure of the soil don't keep doing that just say to yourself okay I want to learn about this chop and drop. Here's what the bull wrote here. He said, chop and drop is great. He wrote that chop and drop is great because it is. I mean, I've been doing it for years and my soil went from a light brown to a dark, dark, pretty black soil. I call it asphalt color because it's just black. And that's it. That's how you do it. Make it do what it do. I guess that's it. Is there any questions anyone have? Any, uh, you know, hey, and look at everybody get a chance, stop over and see uh, Food Forest Permaculture. He put a video up, uh, I think it was yesterday, and he talked about his stay in the hospital and, and that he's doing better now. But he, uh, you know, it's an interest. It's just good to say hello to uh, the gentleman. He's been there for, uh, you know, a lot of years still gardening, and he's still out there going to be gardening this year. And we want to just wish him much uh, success and, and get well soon. Uh, but uh, on that note, I'm going to get out of here and start because I got everything I need from uh, for my garden. I told all of you that I'm ordering all my seeds online now. And these are some that I say, those are, that's Oprah. Starting my Oprah indoors at this time around. I am cheating. Yes, I am. I'm starting as much as I possibly can indoors and take that crap outside. So when, when the weather uh, is right and I start getting the proper nighttime temperature, remember, the only thing you're concerned about is a consistent uh, nighttime temperature. Uh, you get around uh, 55, 60 degrees at night. Uh, a lot of plants enjoy that because during the day, you know, it starts warming that soil up. Um, 
and six weeks, I will start mine six weeks before uh, the uh, last frost date, which is uh, around April uh, 15th. So six weeks before that, uh, I will start putting things in containers and getting things started growing. Uh, because I, you know, if you know me, if you've been watching me, I am not the one to try to sell plants to. I do not buy plants from box stores because they grow them on, on hyped up steroids. And when you put them in the ground and they start lagging behind and start acting like they want to die or they grow, but they, they, they just, it's a different deal. And to give somebody, check this out, $3.00 for a plant, a plant, come on man, that's a hell of a markup, that's why I put this name in these videos, you know, when you get ripped off, because you can buy a tiny little seed, one single seed, uh, wouldn't even cost you three cents, but when they grow it into a plant, they charge you close to four dollars for that puppy, I don't believe in that kind of economics, I don't believe in that, not when it comes to me. I'll buy, uh, let me see. I bought these seeds here because I haven't grown any watermelons in a long time. Now, these seeds, are, which, they, which they used to sell, I don't know what they're going to do this year, but they used to do this at Walmart every year. They do the uh, 50 cent seeds. I hope you can see that. 50 cent seeds. And what you do with these seeds is you grow, you grow your plant. And people always, oh, no. A watermelon plants, they don't like their roots being disturbed. They don't like their roots being disturbed. You see farmers out there with the, with the boxes of uh, uh, on the back of these tractors, dropping them in there, putting them in the ground, putting them in the ground, because they don't have time to mess around. They got they got they got fruit to grow, vegetables to grow, so they can they can get this stuff. So they know it works. So people are telling you, all you gotta do is just just handle uh, uh, plants such as a uh, watermelon with some kind of sense, but you don't want to. You don't want to uh, say that you can't start that plant indoors. Why would you do that to yourself? Watermelon uh, plants uh, can be started indoors. They can be started indoors successfully. All you do is give it what it needs. Grow the plant. That way, when you put it outside, you got a plant that says 80, uh, uh, 90 days. Some watermelon plants say 100 days. But you start them indoors. You get them plants ahead of themselves, and then you go and put them puppies outside. Um, uh, the the box that I have was a box that, that where I put my plants in and get them started. A neighbor threw it out 10 years ago. Threw it out. And I looked at it. I said, go set this in your, your shed and let it just sit there. Because you can use this for something. And when you, you don't want to bring stuff in your house. Uh, other people's furniture because you know creepy crawlies might be in them but if you leave it out on the, in a shed where there's no food supply uh whatever is in it a spider or or a little critter is not going to be in it long because they're not going to stay where there's no food uh so anyway so I, so, I, so i hung the um the i bought a light for 26 dollars at uh, home depot and i put the bulbs in it for uh uh, those those fluorescent tubes. Anyone familiar with fluorescent tubes? Four feet long. And I built my own freaking light. And I bought the chain that uh, they sell. And I hung that thing in there. This is pretty. It's a big uh, box. It's like seven feet long. No, six feet long. Uh, about four feet, uh, about three feet deep. And I put the light in there, please. It looked like that, that thing grow just grow plants just as well as one that costs a thousand dollars. It grows them just as good. I don't play around. So you can set things on the top when you get them started and growing and they're doing well. And you could also put down in the bottom. You can drop that light. Now, what I like to do, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop some science here real quick. I like to take that light and set it down close. On those plants as soon as they start emerging and I put that light down there because I want my stems uh, thick thick and short and stout that's what I want I don't want them long and lanky 
I want them, I want them, you know, I want them right. So you use the heated mats to uh, stimulate the seeds into growing a little faster, basically. Um, and you make your own soil mixture, which I do that all the time. My, my seed starter mix. This year, I'm going to get real fancy with my seed starter mix. I, I do um, uh, I, I do what we call it. What is that stuff called? A uh, uh, perlite. And I also do uh, uh, peat moss. And also, I put in there a little bit of um, what do you call it? Uh, cow manure. And, and what you do with that is um, I'm going to strain it this year because I bought a strainer and I've been dying it use it. I used to use it for another purpose when I was selling um, uh, when I was in compost. I would strain every bit of it. And have it when, when you bought it for me in a bag, it, it not only worked well, it was pretty. It was pretty on top of that. Did I mention it? It was pretty? I hope I did. Uh, so at any rate, that's what I did. And when uh, you get uh, the plants at the proper temperatures, they will grow on you, they will look beautiful, they will look incredible, and you will say to yourself, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. I did it better than I could have, uh, and plus I had fun doing it. How about that? How about that, folks? I had fun doing it. All right, good people, this has been the Morning Gardener's Show. I want to thank you for tuning in and allowing me to bend your ears and, and, and try to enlighten you about some of the things that I've learned about gardening. And I've been watching a lot of your videos and learning some things from your uh, videos as well and uh, and getting the, the information out there because I want to see people grow food. I want to see people have food. Food. Much food I want them to have. I want them to have food. Healthy food. Because when they have healthy food and, 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 and they go to the grocery store, and they look at those tomatoes and say, I'm not paying $4 for two tomatoes. I'm not paying uh, $3 for, uh, what is it, $3 for uh, two bell peppers. Uh, come on. They got to be joking. But they're not joking. They're dead serious. Because you got to pay all that overhead. And if the farmer's got two girlfriends, you got to pay for that. Because it costs him money to take care of them women. Uh, and and that means that you're gonna have to pay a little bit more for the for the vegetables because he's trying to wine and dine her. Please, he's not playing around. Or if you got a wife at home and she likes nice things, she needs your money to, to to help her out, or she help him out. Come on. And 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 he, they pimping you for it, and you really don't need to spend a whole lot of money in your garden to have a big successful garden. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You got to look at your land and say, how much can I grow in this space? Okay, now, got that. What will grow in this space, in this particular environment? Find out what grows well in your area. Find out what grows well in your area. You can do that by just simply Googling, and I've done it before, because uh, I'm here in Maryland, and I just Google what vegetables grow well in Maryland. That's all you got to do. And it'll pop up and it'll show you what corn grows well there, what, what peppers grow well there, what watermelons grow well there. It'll tell you what grows well in your location. And you just use that kind of like a roadmap. Because this year I plan on doing some corn this year. I like corn and I'm not paying that outrageous price for it. Plus, I don't like the way corn tastes that comes from the grocery store. I don't really like it. It just gets bland tasting. But what I think I want to do is grow my own corn. And because, you know, I've grown corn that was so freaking sweet that I was standing in the, uh, the, 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 the plot, if you will, and eating it raw. And, and I don't I don't I'm not ashamed of that. I was eating it raw. I couldn't believe it was so good. And I said, I hope this don't make me sick and hurt my stomach or anything. But it didn't. Um, and the, the variety that I grew was gave to me by a gardener. That uh, I don't see much of him on YouTube anymore. Uh, he's, uh, what is his name? Um, can't remember his name. Real good guy. Real good guy. And um, man, what is his name? It's going to bother me the rest of the day. It's going to bother me. But uh, 
you know, so he gave me some seeds. And one of the seeds were, um, it was called peaches and cream. That's what the corn was called. Could not believe how good that was. Peaches and cream. Look it up. Try to grow some of it to grow in your area, and you will you will you will not regret it. It's so sweet that I'm still hooked on it. Every time I go to buy corn seeds, I go get peaches and cream. Now here in Maryland, uh, number one corn that grows well here in Maryland is called um, Silver Queen. Silver Queen, and it's supposed to grow really well here. So I'm going to try that this year, and also I'm going to try the peaches. Well, I'm going to also grow some more of the peaches and cream. And I need I need my corn I need my corn on spot because you grow that corn I'm telling you uh, you can start corn indoors in trays shoot that's what I do I'm not putting it outside and putting it in the ground for the seed to die I like to have no I got a plant and when I know I have that plant and I put that plant in the ground put that compost around it uh, not only get that compost around it uh, spill some of that urine down there on it and watch it jump out the ground because I'm gonna tell you something folks. As quiet as it can, corn loves human urine. Don't tell anybody that. Keep it to yourself. Corn, watermelon, loves human urine. They get big and they do it fast and they don't waste time. Human urine, you imagine that. It's free and it grows plant incredible. So keep that, keep that under your hat though. No, let me stop. <laughs> Just acting crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, try that, folks. Try that. Try that. Try that. Try that. All right. Now, this time, I'm really going this time. I've been saying it, you know, I'm going, but I keep on, you know, delaying it because I love talking about gardening. It was just a, a wonderful thing. Uh, marigold, get those started before you put them out. Um, do that because it's a wonderful thing to because the sprinkler seeds in the ground and waiting for them to come up waiting for them to come up if they come up and then try to go where did i put them at and uh some people still uh, i don't plant in straight lines i think i mentioned this to some of you before i plant mine in circles squares and in different places so that when people look at my plants for the most part they don't know where they are they don't know what they look like they don't know what they are uh when you plant in straight lines that pretty much says, hey, I have a garden over here. Come on and rob me. You know, that's what it says, because they can see it. Uh, they can uh, identify. But another uh, 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 plant that will dead give away that you have a garden in the yard, can anyone mention what that is? What's the number one crop you can put in that tells everyone that you're growing food over there? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds there. Post it up there. It should be a little fun, a little game there. But post it up there. What plant? Even if you are not a gardener, you can put it in your yard and everybody know that you have food over there. Okay. All right. A couple more seconds. And if anybody care to do it, maybe not. But I'm just saying, it's a vegetable that you can plant. It tells everyone, everyone, that you're growing food over there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and answer it because, I see, I got no takers for it so far. Uh, it is called corn. Corn will tell everybody that okra. Okay, said so okra tomato. Oh, okay, tomatoes was good because okra. Um, if you got a layman that don't know anything about gardening, you can you can get it by them on okra because they think that that's some kind of weird plant that produces a pod. You might not know what it is, but they you know, you're right. A lot of farmers would know what what okra is. Tomatoes. Um, when they first grow, they're green. Uh, once they turn red, everybody knows you got food over there. But the dead giveaway is corn. Corn grows tall. It sticks out. It has those taps at the top. And, and, and everybody knows it's corn. So they go and rob you and keep, you know, coming. All they're going to do is wait for you to get, you know. I had a man that was working on a roof. And he saw all these beautiful, huge leaves on these plants that was in my yard. And he recognized that they were collard greens. And he came to my property and he said, excuse me, sir. I couldn't help noticing the collard greens you have over there. Could, you, could I have some of your collard greens? I said, oh, no, no, you don't want any of those collard greens. I said, I just sprayed them with something, which I did. Um, 
I forgot what I sprayed him with, but I sprayed him with something because I was I wasn't trying to kill him, but I sprayed him uh, because they were being attacked by bugs or something like that. And at that time, that's how I guard back then. Bugs used to eat my stuff. Bugs do not eat my stuff anymore. They don't eat up my vegetables because what I do, like I said, I grow my stuff like they do in the forest. I don't put uh, tomatoes in this row, corn in that row, and, and, and okra in this row. I don't do that. I grow it all together, all together, mixed up, everything. And what happens when you do that? These plants support each other or they'll kill each other. So what I find is some plants over the years, I found plants that do better together. Like I'll do uh, basil along with uh, to, uh, tomatoes. I'll do uh, corn along with okra. I do um, um, squash uh, in the same location. I'll do watermelons. And watermelons in the same location. I'll do corn. And I, I don't care how it comes out. I put it all together. And, I, and it's like when you go out there and shop, I go look for stuff. I go look for peppers. Oh, wait a minute. I think I put the peppers over here. Oh, yeah, there you go. Those are chili peppers. Oh, over here. Oh, yeah, that's my uh, habanero peppers. Oh, yeah, they put down my spaghetti tonight. And that's how I do. And I like going out in, in, in the morning time and um, uh, uh, picking vegetables in my slippers and and uh, get some spinach and, and some squash and, 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 and some onions and I dice it everything up and and, and saute it in, in a bit of olive oil with some pepper and some garlic. Uh, my God, come on, come on, folks, come on. <laughs> all right, this has been the Morning Garden. Thank you all very much. And um, Nature Nine and Family, I am going to go and check out your latest video again. Because I, I looked at it and uh, and I, I liked it, but I didn't really get the chance to watch all of it because uh, I was really tired that night. I was really, really beat. And I said, I got to get the rest. I said, I have to. I've been working for doubles. But I like working doubles for one reason. The money. The money. And and one thing about my job, I can get as many, I can work as much overtime as I actually want. Not a lot of jobs are like that. Um, so I got to be thankful for that. Um, another thing is I've got everything for my garden. I've already got it. It's, 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 this all, it's all, I have my other seeds, but this is all I need. And, and I'm going to start on a mad dash, folks, to start saving seeds like crazy. I'm not going to keep handing out my ducat to these people selling these seeds because some of them selling your old seeds. Some of them selling you uh, seeds from last year. Some of them are going to stores and get up seeds that are uh, marked down because they didn't sell them from the big box stores. And they take those seeds and repackage them and mark them up. And you got some old seeds that cost you twice what they were worth when, when they were selling them fresh. Can't play that game no more. Now, there's an okra that I've grown. It's called a burgundy okra. I bought, uh, let me see what I got here. I bought the seeds on eBay. I don't know how many in here, folks. I think it's about, it might be, it might be 30 seeds in here. It might be 30 seeds in here, but guess what I'm going to do with those seeds? When I'm finished, said and done, I'm going to grow so many seeds from that burgundy okra that I can start selling my own okra seeds. Excuse me. I can start selling my own okra seeds. And that's how the name of that tune is. You're not going to keep gouging me. Oh, thank you, uh, good people, for all of those thumbs up. It feels good to be represented. But I hope someday, and I don't know what I got to do to get to that point, but I've seen people get online, and they have hundreds of people watching them. And I don't know how they do it. I, I sit and watch this show, and it's something, I think it's either something about a wife and uh, a husband team. Uh, maybe I can do something different with the background. Now, this camera here, I went out and uh, I bought expensive cameras. Uh, I got them home. The bastards didn't work. Um, and I don't know why. It would be this big delay. It would be this big delay when you do that or whatever. And I would talk and it would go. Yes, indeed. I would try. And, and I said, what is wrong with these cameras? And they said that it was some kind of setting that I had off somewhere and whatever. But these were really high-tech cameras. Really high tech. 
but I would like to get me a nice, decent webcam. And then I saw somebody uh, had an actual um, camera that was a webcam. It was a full-size camera that was plugged into a computer. And I thought, wow, I know that must look great. And the guy did have uh, a nice-looking picture. But and then the sound quality. You can get, really get involved in this. So you can get, see, I was trying to hook this up to uh, create uh, um, for a microphone, put it on a stand and say, hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Morning Gardener Show. And it would be the sound is rich and full and it feels better. Um, and you know you can you can get you can go out crazy where you can I want to create a show behind this and that's what I want to do. But I I got to get up on this uh, technology because I bought programs and 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 that sort of thing. I have the programs to do it, but I mean they involved. I mean these programs are absolutely involved. Okay, let's see what we got here. What we got here? Jermaine, I'm watching from Ireland. And I love what we do. Uh, it's a form of uh, permaculture. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, this person is from. Uh, okay, all right. He's from. He's from a long ways away. Ireland looks like. Man, I swear. Well, I'm trying to see without my glasses there, but I love it. I'm glad to see somebody's checking out my show. If I'm, a, I mean, from a long distance away. That's a long distance away from where I am. I am here in Maryland. Uh, and I have been gardening here for the last 20, well, which will be in just 21 years, and I love it. When I first, let me tell you a little quick little story uh, while, I'm at, while I'm thinking of it. When I bought my house, I remember uh, only thing when I, when I was driving around, driving around, looking for a house, and uh, on an old beat up car with wrecked front end or whatever. And, and I saw this house, and I said, oh my God. And I said, that's it. That's what I said when I saw the house. I said, that's it, that's it, that's it. And these people were looking at the house at the same time. They were looking in the windows. And he had, there was a guy, he had two, two women with him, and they were looking in the windows. And they said, oh, we don't want this house. No, we don't want this house. Hell no, this house needs to work. Oh, no. Why is the bathtub downstairs in the, in the, in the, in the dining room? No, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> you know? but, but what happened was uh, the, the house was, perfect for me. I was looking for detached and I was looking for a place where I could start a garden. But God only knows that some of the houses, the, the backyard could be huge to these houses. And to me, to me it was huge. I'll put it that way. Because some people got backyard three, four times, five, ten times the size of mine. But here's what happened. I got on the phone. It was a Sunday. I called a real estate realtor up that I was talking to that, that was giving me the list of these properties. And I remember running around and I said, uh, hello, yes, I, I, I see something I like. He said, really? He said, uh, you want me to come out today? Or you want to take a look at it? I said, yes. And it was on a Sunday. And I looked around the backyard. It was all these trees and, and weeds and grass and everything and all in the yards. And it was crazy. Uh, and I said, oh, my goodness. I said, how am I going to get rid of all this stuff? But I said, I'm still getting this house. Now, can anyone tell me what's odd about this story? It's really odd. I never, even when I called a real estate agent, I was asking him, I said, uh, excuse me, sir. I said, is this my backyard? He said, yeah, it's all that's your backyard. All that, all the way back. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, keep going. Yep, that's yours. That's the property line there, sir. I said, this is me? And it was all grown in. It was, it was snakes in the yard. It was, it, was, it was weeds and grass and trees and everything. And I remember I was so determined. I stood tall. And I got my back into it. And I bought me a chainsaw at, at, a, at a, one of my scratch and dead stores. First chainsaw. Uh, a polar, I think it was called. A polar or something like that. And I started cutting and realized that my chainsaw was a chump when it came to these trees. These trees are really hard wood and about that big around. Most of the trees are about that big around. And I started cutting, 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 and cutting, and knocking down the weeds. It was just so much work. And it was uh, some, some trash was in the yard. And I just kept pulling it, pulling that, pulling at it, pulling at it, because I wanted this. And soon we started seeing daylight in the yard. So when the 
stuff that I was throwing out and the big dumpster was in the front and I kept loading the dumpster up and the, and the contractor was telling me, hey, we're working on your house and you're loading the dumpster up. We need the dumpster. And I said, okay, okay. But I realized that, again, I was the boss. I was, all this was being paid for by me. So I said, the heck with what he's talking about. I'm going to use that dumpster if I need it. So long story short, when I first looked at the house, I never looked at the house. The real estate agent actually said, uh, you want to go in and look at the house? And I said, oh, yeah. That's what my exact reaction was. Oh, yeah, because the yard sold me. The yard sold me. And and I saw this uh, garage that was there, a uh, shed, rather. And uh, and I knew, I, I said, this is going to be my new home. And so I put money down on it that Sunday. It was weird because he said, uh, you know, you want to wait for money? And I said, no. I said, you know, I'll give a check to you and you put the money down and let's get this thing rolling. Let's get this ball rolling. Went back to his office, nevertheless. Went back to his office and we did what we did and paperwork and everything. Um, and I lost the house. Somebody outbid me. I lost it. No, 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 no. 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 That was another deal I was in some time ago. That what, I, what happened to me was uh, they closed, whoever was selling, said they didn't want to sell it at the last minute. At 12.01, I will sell it. We don't want to sell it. And I think I lost my, some of my money, and it was just crazy. Um, but at any rate, um, the house went back up on the market. Um, I think it was about a month and a half, two months later, it went back up on the market. And I remember the real estate agent calling me and saying, hey, listen, uh, guess what? And I said, yes. I recognized her voice, and uh, she said, that house you wanted is still on the market. Are you still interested? I said, yes, I'm interested. So I got up some more money and put down on it, and and and, uh, and uh, I listened to the real estate agent. She said, I think you should bid on the house like you want it. And I said, really? I said, okay, what do you think I should bid on it? And they told me the toll, and I was like, I was kind of like this, what the heck? And so at any rate, I went ahead and did what I did. Got it. Successful, I'm living here now. So, that being said, uh, I'm now gardening here, and it's a beautiful story. It's gardening is great. I put in uh, um, a couple of, first thing I put in was some rose bushes, and um, and I had all these plants growing different places that whoever uh, had it at first was trying to beautify the landscaping and put plants in, and, and I didn't care for none of that. I wanted just food growing and um it was just interesting. And now I'm in a situation where I have, uh, I have, a, uh, I don't know how many fruit trees I have out there right now. And I'm thinking about adding some more. Um, they're all grown close together. My fruit trees are growing close together. They're like some of them 20 or uh, one inches apart. And people say, well, why would you plant them that, that close together? Said, Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Um, when you plant trees close together, they stretch each other just enough to keep each other small. And, uh, uh, they, they reduce some of the uh, fruit load, uh, but um, uh, I want to maintain some kind of uh, size. And I want to be able to add more varieties in on my property, but the other ways of doing that, which is you could actually take uh, a peach tree and add uh, Alberta to that peach tree, uh, Hell Haven, Red Haven. You can add all these other type of peaches to this, this peach tree uh, just by grafting them onto the other tree. So now... I just learned that, so I've been buying these trees. So now I have plum trees, apple trees, peach trees. I have, um, uh, what is that thing called, the cherry trees. I have cherry trees, incredible cherry trees. Um, and I am excited about that. And um, I just got to tell you, you know, it's a wonderful thing. So... What I'm going to do next is I'm going to graft. Uh, it's a cherry tree that I have. I can't recall the name of it right now, but it, it, it grows cherries. It produces cherries without a second cherry tree. And that's the reason why I bought it was because I got tired of having cherry trees around. A lot of them were not producing. And now 
uh, I'm going to take a branch off of that tree, graft it over there onto that tree that will not produce or have not produced, and I am going to start producing cherry on that tree based uh, on the fact that the other one is a uh, one that doesn't need Mm -hmm. I, I know what I'm doing now. Uh, those cherry trees are wonderful trees to have. I mean, I grow a lot of cherry. I grow a lot of cherries, uh, and I do not uh, eat these suckers. You know, I don't eat all these cherry trees. Uh, I mean, all these cherries. I don't eat them all. I, I sometimes it's too many cherries to to eat. And now I am. Um, I say, wait a minute. Eat some of those cherries. You, you you're raising these cherries for the birds. Oh, hello, hello. How you doing there? It's the price. Um, always check out my videos, folks. You always check out my videos. Uh, uh, waiting for him to start a uh, uh, um, waiting for him to start a um, channel. I'm waiting for him to start a channel because he like he's very interested in gardening. But when I went to see what he was growing, and, and I didn't see anything, so I was like, okay, uh, maybe he's planning everything out and he's going to get that. Uh, get to that level at, at, you know when he's ready uh let's see so what what is going on here is that growing your own food gives you power to not pay outrageous prices for peppers and and uh, uh things like tomatoes and, and you know like sweet bell peppers and that sort of thing uh eggplant uh um, and, and so that you have some control over that that gives you an example I will be growing eggplants, but when I grow the eggplants, I will start them early enough so that when I go to put them in the, in the property, they're already old enough to, so they'll start producing. Because I have a problem here with the short growing season we have here in Maryland that I'll grow the plant and it'll go right in the fall and I won't get any time for, and I might grow one or two of the, um, what do they call the thing? Uh, eggplant. I love eggplant. You know, if you cook it right, I'll eat it. But if you cook it wrong, of course, I won't eat it. But this has been the Morning Gardener Show. And I'm going to get out of here and, you know, get into some other things. And it's been wonderful talking to each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Yes. One look in your eyes. And I see just what you need to me. Okay. I uh, had to get that out of my system there. <clears throat> uh, so what I'm thinking is, is uh, do I need any more seeds? <laughs> no, because I have plenty of the seeds being saved. And I have some down in my, my seed box. I looked at the seed box today. I didn't go through the seed box, but uh, the seeds are there when I get ready to do what I got to do. Tomatoes, my favorite is uh, Brandywine. And the other one is Cherokee Purple. Ah. And I would buy those seeds where uh, you get those award-winning tomatoes in like, like what, four pounds, three pounds, four pounds, whatever. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that necessarily. Um, but I do search around at, at uh, things that grow well, as I said earlier, things that grow well in Maryland. And you can do the same in your location. Things that grow well in your location. And, and you know, tried and true, in other words. Uh, Silver Queen is a corn that grows well in Maryland. Maryland. So this will be your first year trying uh, the corn. And I will, in fact, grow corn in containers, uh, five gallon buckets, I can start from there, I can start from the ground, I can start all over the place and just be, you know, because uh, you can do that with corn. Corn don't care as long as it's fed. It is a heavy feeder. And I'm finding that most plants are heavy feeders. As long as they got size to them, uh, uh, watermelon, vines, you know, they're going to grow and they're going to be heavy feeders. All right. On that note, good people, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been the Morning Gardener. And I want to thank you. And remember, check out some of my vids. And, uh, you know, when you get a chance and uh, if you have time. Um, and leave comments. I like the comments when people leave comments on my videos. Hey, this video is live. Or, hey, um, I want to ask you a question. I'm here. 
I'm here. This is the Morning Garden. Thank you very much. Remember to keep on growing. Thank you.